Okay, what I've done on this jacket at this point is that I've taken in the underarms, I've cut off all the rippings, of course, and I've curved the lower front. And then I've marked, I figured out, I've marked it in an inch and a quarter so I know where to roll this to look to. You'll see that in a minute. And then I've also marked an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half, so that it's symmetrical. You can see here across. And what I've done at each one of those intersections then is to take this thing. It's an eyelet center and you, setter, and you can find them at the scrapbook stores. And I stick the tiniest little nib right here at the intersection, and I go like that. All that does is break the fibers so that later on when I'm sitting up with the family in front of the boob tube at night, I can thread this ribbon in here and then easily get through with the ribbon to whip it. And I'll show you that later. So at this point, I know that I'm going to use this wonderful dyed ribbon on here. And I had this clover flower that kind of pulls out the cream color. That's all I know. I don't have it all planned, and I really encourage you not to think you have to get everything totally planned before you start. And then I went to my cream color drawer, and I found this suede type fabric that'll work as a collar or something. I'm not sure yet. So now I'm ready to stitch. I didn't use to actually stitch this down, but especially when you have a curve like I have down here, I find that it kept unrolling even once it was whipped with the silk. So what I've come to now is to blanket stitch it down. I've put clear monofilament at the top of my machine. I've got regular thread down in the bobbin. I find it's better if you have a lid like this that you close it. And the other thing that you really, really have to do is lower your upper tension so that that bottom thread doesn't show at the top. I've set it for a little blanket stitch that goes like that with a very, very narrow little uh, jump over. Okay, it's going to go the right way. So I'm going to fold this twice so it comes into there. And I'm just going to stitch around. Okay, why don't you stop it, Charlie? Okay. Bye. Why? There we go. There we go. All right, I'm down to where it's starting to curve. So I'm going to have to go a little bit slower and just work this in. But you can see how that would want to unroll even once it's whipped down with ribbon, because that's just pretty loose and decorative. See how that works? I don't really want this to be seen. That's why I'm using the clear monofilament thread. Let's see, we have my visitor. Look at him, Bella. Say hi, I'm the shop kitty. So, maybe you have a helper like I do. Bella, look at the camera. See how this is rippled after I did that stitching? This is cotton, so it'll pretty much shrink back in, but I'm just pointing this out to make you aware that when you stitch around knit and it stretches, you've, you've got to control it again. So, here I'm going to with a good steam iron. And I'm not putting pressure on the fabric. So, I'm just covering that steam over it. And then, you're really best to let this sit and cool. But I want to show you the difference then between The two sides, one that's been steamed to behave and one that hasn't. All right, so I poked the holes with the eyelet punch and I always allow whatever length I'm going to whip, in this case it's from the top down to the center back, I allow twice that much length of ribbon just to be sure. It's not going to take quite that much but I feel secure with that. And then I use the chibi, nice big old blunt needle. And it's just really great TV work to sit and play with this scrumptious silk ribbon. And because you broke the fibers of the sweatshirt, 
with the punch, you could even use a nail and a hammer, just something small. You see, you just have to play with it and keep whipping around. If you want the angles to be symmetrical, you have to start either at the center back and work up to the top, or the top and work around to the center back, and start at the other top and work back around to the center back. I just think they need to be symmetrical, even though I'm not a very symmetrical type person design-wise in most cases. One side of the ribbon is satiny and the other side is crepey. I feel like the satin side is the right side or the one that I want to use, so you just have to fiddle with it. But I think that's fun and I think you'll think so too.